Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard trigonometric equation. So we do have the square root of sine x plus cosine x is equal to zero, and we're going to be finding the x values. Now, in, even though I didn't specify, we can just go ahead and find the solutions on the interval zero to two pi, or we can look at the general solutions as well. So let's see what happens here. First of all, a couple of things to notice. We can isolate the square root here. So I can just basically subtract cosine x from both sides. Then I'm going to be getting something like this. Notice that square root of something needs to be greater or equal to zero. So we do know that this needs to be greater or equal to zero. But not only that, sine x also needs to be greater than or equal to zero because we want this to be real solutions. OK, now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you're looking at two things here. Negative cosine x must be non-negative or greater or equal to zero. That just means that cosine x needs to be less than or equal to zero. Now, what does this tell you? Sine x needs to be positive or zero. Cosine x needs to be negative or zero. So if you consider the unit circle, you're looking at four different quadrants, right? Sine x is positive in the first and second quadrant. But if you want cosine to be negative, then you're basically looking at the second quadrant. So we're going to basically looking at the x values in the second quadrant, meaning that they're going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, just expressed, uh, expressed in degrees. OK, so let's go ahead and proceed with the solution. What am I going to do? After uh, isolating the square root, I'm basically going to be squaring both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. If I square both sides, obviously, this is no longer going to be true, but you already know. So I should be getting something like sine x is equal to cosine squared x. Now, how can I work this out? Well, obviously, there's a relationship between sine and cosine. So instead of cosine squared, I can write 1 minus sine squared using the famous Pythagorean identity and then put everything on the same side. Sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, I said that this problem has a golden flavor and why golden flavor. And why did I say that? You'll notice in a little bit why we are dealing with the golden ratio here. Oh, well, indirectly somewhat. Anyway, so I'm going to replace sine x with something. Uh, let's call that s. That makes sense, right? So this becomes a quadratic equation. s squared plus s minus 1 is equal to 0. As you know, sine x needs to be a positive. So we're only going to be looking at the positive solutions. But anyway, let's go ahead and solve it first using the quadratic formula. This is going to give me negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is plus 4. And that gives us square root of 5, where the golden ratio kind of comes in. It's not exactly the golden ratio, but you'll hopefully know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so from here, we get two solutions. One of them is going to be negative 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And the other one is going to be negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. Now, notice that negative 1 minus root 5 over 2 is negative. This is less than 0. And we don't want the negative solutions because we said that sine x needs to be greater or equal to zero here. But not only that, this value is also less than negative one. So it's not even acceptable. So you can totally forget about it, right? This is not acceptable at all. So the only value we have left is this one. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do about it. So this means that sine x is equal to root five minus one over two. Is this between negative one and one? Does that satisfy the criteria? Well, it does because definitely this is going to be less than one and uh, greater than negative one, of course. So it's OK. But uh, we also have to look at the other criteria that we have, right? Which was uh, cosine x needs to be less than or equal to 0, and sine x needs to be greater or equal to 0. In other words, we're going to be in the second quadrant. OK, just remember that. Now, how does that help us? Uh, well, first of all, I kind of have to inverse sine both sides, right? I mean, how do you find x from here? We don't really have a special angle like 30, 45, 60, or even like 36 or you know, uh, something like 72 that gives us this value. So we just have to inverse sign both sides and that's going to give us the x value basically, right? So x is equal to sine inverse of root 5 minus 1 over 2. Well, this kind of gives us the x value, but does it meet our criteria? Because our criteria says that x needs to be in the second quadrant. But if you think about the range of the sine inverse function or the arc sine function, because this is the same as arc sine, right? So if you think about the range of that function, you'll notice that by definition, the range of the arc sine function is going to be here, right? 
so it's negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So second quadrant is not mentioned there. So what am I going to do? Well, if you're getting a positive value and you inverse sign it, you're going to be in the first quadrant. But you don't want to be in the first quadrant, so you want to put that in the second one. So what you can do is basically, without changing the name of the function, uh, you can basically subtract, if you're working in degrees here, let's say we're just working in degrees, you can just subtract this from 180 degrees, or you can subtract it from pi if you're working in radians, doesn't really matter. So the actual x value that we're going to be accepting for the solution is going to be uh, basically this one, pi minus, pi minus, arc sine or sine inverse. I think this is probably more acceptable uh, depending on which country you're in, but I would say uh, this is probably more universal. So this is the inverse function basically, right? So you have to subtract the angle from pi, which is 180 degrees in radians because you have to be in the second quadrant, right? Because our cosine value has to be negative in order for this equation to be true. But this gives us a particular solution. And if you look at the graph, you're going to know what I'm talking about. And to get the general solutions, we just need to add multiples of 2 pi to this. It doesn't matter. They could be negative or positive. And this should give us all the solutions. All right? Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.